Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Man Cave Podcast brought to you by High V and Toyson Ford. Dan Casper here with you as always. On this episode of the podcast, we're going to talk a little Packers. Packers, NFL trade deadline, uh, come and gone. They move on from Preston Smith. What does it mean? And uh, kind of taking a look at, okay, who's, you know, with the second half coming up here and with this trade, who are some of the guys that have to really step up now for the Packers? So let's let's just jump right into it. First of all, the move with trading Preston Smith. Preston Smith was a guy that, uh, if you'd been kind of following along a little bit online with some of the trade rumors, I know rumors don't necessarily always pan out, or reports always don't aren't always true and such when it comes to you know trade stuff and that. But Preston Smith was was a name that was mentioned from the the national peeps, the talking heads out there, the insiders, that there was teams inquiring about the availability, availability of Preston Smith. So on one hand, that shouldn't be that big of a surprise. Uh, but then you also look at the production of Preston Smith so far this year and kind of take a look at it. And, I mean, he's been a guy, too, that I think a lot of Packers fans have been wondering, where where is where has he been at this year? Right? I mean, where where's it's been pretty darn quiet for uh for Preston Smith. Does have two and a half sacks, but just six tackles so far this year. And you look at the play time, I mean his snaps have been cut down. Playing time has been cut down just as recently as this last game here. So the writing it to me was was kind of on the wall here. And here's another nugget here too. This is from Aaron Schatz. Uh he had tweeted out just looked uh for the pass rush win rate Preston Smith is at 10.4% this year, which is low. I mean, that is very low. The thing is, it's the same exact one as Zadarius Smith so far this year. Now, Zadarius has more sacks. Does he benefit, though, from playing opposite of Miles Garrett? Yeah, probably. Probably a little bit there. But it's it's clear that, I mean, Preston Smith, who's going to be 32 here in just, uh, what, next week, couple weeks here, yeah, on that Chicago game. The, it, to me, it was clear the writing was on the wall. And Packers are going to take a little bit of a dead cap hit with his contracts. But it felt like if there was going to be a time that the Packers were going to move on from Preston Smith, it was probably going to be this upcoming offseason. So, at this point, Green Bay electing to get a seventh-round pick. And I know people are going to say a seventh-round pick. Couldn't get more? Couldn't get, couldn't get more in return? I mean, it's whatever the market dictates at this point. If Preston Smith was playing a little bit better, probably would have gotten better compensation. But at the same time, if Preston Smith's playing a little bit better, you're probably not trading him because you're pass rush. You need help over there. Now, Goody mentions Mosby, Mosby, Aaron Mosby, and, uh, and, and Britton Cox Jr. as guys getting a little bit more involved in the rotation. We saw Aaron uh, last week. Getting uh, getting a half sack credited with a half sack with Rashawn Gary going up against Detroit there, and Aaron spent a little time a couple of years ago with with Carolina and such. So he's not a rookie, but uh, he's been in the league practice squad and such for the last couple of years. I'd like to sit here and say that I'm excited to see Aaron and 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 Britain, you know, getting some opportunities and getting involved in the rotation more. The thing is, is I don't know what to expect from them. I I, I don't. You know, I'd love to sit here and say, oh, finally going to get this guy more reps. It's about time. He deserves them. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work, and I don't know if they're going to improve the pass rush. You hope that's going to be the case. You hope with more opportunities for those youngsters that they're going to be able to take those opportunities and run and, and make the most of them. I just I don't know. I have no idea if it's going to work or not. But I understand it. I understand giving more reps to to your other guys, and and at this point too, giving more reps to Lucas Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness has not been playing well. Let's let's call a spade a spade. He has not been playing well. Will more opportunities and more experience help him out? Hopefully, that's the optimistic approach. But right now, in his reps, we haven't seen a whole lot to be excited about. Same for Enoch Barre. So I get that. Green Bay wants to give those guys 
more reps. They want to get them on the field more, get them more experience. Because then they're hoping that those reps and that experience will help them be better football players and, and just continue to get better and essentially get in that pass rush a little bit better. I don't know if it's going to work. You don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work. They don't know if it's going to work. I hope it does. I really do. I, I, I hope it does. But essentially, we're in a wait-and-see mode now. But this does put more pressure. So on, on one hand, you know, guys like Lucas Van Ness and, and Enoch Barre and such, you're going to get more playing time. But the other part of this, too, is you got more pressure on your shoulders. You better perform. This defense needs you to perform. This team needs you to perform. The defensive front has to get better overall. Pressure, stopping the run, it has to be better. So while you're getting more opportunities and you're going to be getting more playing time, that pressure now is more on you. Or is on you more. Use proper English, Dan. So you better take better better run with it. You better run with it. Uh, Goody also said allowing these two guys to get on the field a little bit, maybe some snaps to go with the other guys. I think will help us. Um, when asked that, uh, you know, Halfley's defense uh, not yet having a quote that real breakout game. Goody says he does feel like it's coming. Quote from that entire group, we need more from those guys as we move forward into the second half of the season, and I think we will get that. I like the way they work. They've got to continue to keep pushing. You know, now with with Smith moving on, you're taking away a veteran locker room presence type of guy, well-respected. From all accounts, players loved Preston Smith and, and, and all that sort of stuff. But that, you know, that's that's the nature of the game. That's the nature of sports. It happens. Players in that locker room may suck. It may sting a little bit. Now, on the one hand, they do have a buy so they can let those, you know, uh, sadness feelings or whatever you want to call them kind of, you know, move on and go through the grieving process and such. But it's the name of the game. And these a lot of these guys have been through this. They know the routine. They know the drill. Other guys got to fill that void. And I think they've got plenty. I know some people were kind of talking about, well, you're losing a leader in that locker room. But you look across, you know, that roster and you look across those, you know, those different players, there's other dudes that can step up and should step up. I mean, you know, first you start with your quarterback in Jordan Love. Kenny Clark is still there. Elton Jenkins. Uh, you know, a guy like Rashawn Gary's got to step up and, and it has been stepping up in a little bit more of a leadership role. Xavier McKinney, Josh Jacobs. Et cetera, et cetera. So they still have veterans, even though they're the youngest team, and they got actually a little bit younger with with Preston Smith moving on. Still got veterans on this team that can continue uh, that leadership voice. So I'm not really concerned about that. I know some people were, were you know, at least on social media talking about uh, the concern level of you know losing another leader in that locker room. I think they got guys. They they they've got guys in there that can step up into that role. Little uh, later on, Goody's uh, press conference. Uh, he talked about you know the the team and the outlook for the rest of this season. Sitting there at six and three with eight games left to go, he said, "We've got to continue to come together as a football team and play better football at times." But we're six and three. I think we're in a good spot. More consistency and maybe a little bit better in situational football is the goal to go deep into playoffs and to contend for championships. You have to be that kind of team. We're working towards that, and I think these guys have had really good moments. But you've got to be consistent with that. You've got to be able to call upon that whenever you need it. And I would agree. And I think he hit on a lot of stuff that a lot of Packers fans have clamored for and talked about too. Situational football. Consistency. Big things that a lot of fans have been critical of wanting to see better from from this team and I think he's right I think he's he's spot on so with that being said sitting there at six and three and you look at these final eight games 
with this tight NFC, especially this tight division, how many more wins is it going to take, in your opinion, for Green Bay to to hit that postseason, to get back to the postseason? Because I don't think there's a lot of room for error. You know, we talk about that consistency, being consistent to win games. For these final eight, I truly believe it, it's almost going to have a college football type of feel where there's not going to be a lot of room for error where you can't necessarily get away or you know get away from losing a few games here. If you want to comfortably or put yourself in a position where you're confident, comfortably into that playoff chase, you got to come away with, with I think, it, I mean, a winning record in these final eight, but it's a tough schedule too. It's a very tough schedule. I and mean, I don't necessarily look at the records of these teams right now. You know, I know Chicago's kind of maybe trending downward here a little bit, but it's at Chicago. It's a division game. I throw division matchups out the window, when, uh, division rivals out the window. I, 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 let me rephrase that. I throw records of divisional matchups out the window when you get to that. Because you never know. It's just it's it's different. We've seen that. We know that. So you got Chicago twice on here. I'm going to throw the records out the window with those. You still got Minnesota, and you still got Detroit, and those are two road games. So that's four division games coming up here. Four divisional games, and you're already 0-2 in your own division. And both those games were on your home field. You add in San Francisco, who's... You know, it seems like they're getting a little bit healthier. Christian McCaffrey's going to be coming back. We know the history of San Francisco and Green Bay. Miami coming in on a short week. I know Miami right now, not good. Just a couple wins here. But they present some challenges to Green Bay. Again, that's I think Miami's a team. Don't necessarily just pay attention to the record. Don't look at the record. They can present some challenges to Green Bay, uh, specifically Green Bay's defense. With their with their with their speed and and weapons out there too, so don't just kind of chalk that one up, especially on a short week too. Now Green Bay has the advantage because it's at home, but they're going to be coming off of a tough game against San Francisco there, and then you follow that up by going to Detroit, then you follow that up by going to Seattle. Now I think a positive for for Green Bay in these final eight games. I mean, first of all, you got a lot of late, uh, late games, primetime games in there. And kind of a weird schedule, right? You got a Sunday, Sunday, Thursday, Thursday, Sunday night, Monday night. A little different timing there. But what I think does benefit Green Bay a little bit here is there's not a ton of travel. Yes, you go to Seattle. You go all the way to the West Coast. But after that, you're staying in the Midwest. You're at Chicago, you're at Detroit, and you're at Minnesota. Outside of that Seattle game, you're either at home or you're going to one of your divisional opponents. So there's not a ton of travel time in there. That, I think, is a benefit for for Green Bay in that aspect. But when we look at the standings in the NFC and we see that Detroit's number one at 7-1, and one. Commanders are sitting there at 7-2. and two. They got better by getting Marshawn Lattimore at the trade deadline. Commanders are fully going all in at this point. I know Lattimore's a little bit banged up, but Commander's taking advantage of what they have been able to do so far this season and trying to get better and and keep that train rolling. You've got Atlanta, who's leading their division as a third seed, six and three. Arizona's leading their division, five and four. And then this is where the wild card gets a little bit jumbled up here. Minnesota, Philly, six and two. Green Bay holding on to that final spot right now at six and three. I think, I think Green Bay in these final eight games, bare minimum, in my opinion, bare minimum, have to win five. They have to go five and three in these last eight games to put them where I would feel if you can get to eleven total wins, it'd be eleven and six record. An 11-6 record, I think, will get you into the postseason. 10-7, and seven, I'd be a little bit nervous if they go 500, go 4-4, four and four, be a little bit nervous. 
I think we're going to have to be doing some scoreboard watching at that point in time. But if you could go five and three in your final eight and get to eleven and six overall, I feel a little bit better about that. I think you know, just looking at it, how things stand right now, because things will change week in, week out, right? Injuries, all that sort of stuff. But I think you got to win against New Orleans. I think you got to win against, even though you're traveling. That's Seattle. I don't want to say they're gimmies or anything like that. Chicago, can you sweep them? That's four. Then that might be a little tough though too. Let's let's face it. And where's I mean, okay, let's just say one one win against Chicago. That's that's three if you split against Chicago. You need two more between San Francisco, Miami, Minnesota, and Detroit. Where would those maybe come from? So it's 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 definitely an interesting schedule. A little, I think, kind of an underrated, difficult schedule coming up for Green Bay in these final eight games. But I think they need to at least win five to get to eleven wins on this season to get there. I know they made it as what nine and eight last year, but considering how the NFC is playing out right now, unless a couple teams just fall flat and just completely come tumbling down. It's going to be a little bit tougher to make that postseason this year. But for them to get to being a top-tier team, to being a Super Bowl contending team, I'm going back to where we began this conversation. The defensive line, that front, has to get better. For, In my opinion, for this team to take that next step, Yes, they got to clean up the the penalties, the situational football. I mean, it's not perfect. There's a lot of things they can clean up. But I think the next step with Preston Smith being moved on, it's opening up opportunities. You're not kind of like, you know, okay, oh, we got to make sure we get reps for, for Preston in there. The young guys, here you go. Step it the heck up right now. Lucas Van Ness, spotlight's on you, man. Number 90, you're getting more of an opportunity. You are a first-round pick. There's a lot of frustration amongst Packers fans right now from his play. And he was a guy that I think a lot of us in the preseason, in the offseason, were looking at as a guy that was going to benefit from this style of defense, and we have yet to really see that. Will more opportunities for him, more snaps for him, help him hit what we hit that potential or hit you know that that level that we expect from him it better it better because packers need it i don't want to put a lot of no offense to the two guys but i don't want to put a lot of trust and faith into aaron uh, Mosby and, and and Cox Jr. I don't want to. I hope they come out, and if they get more opportunities, I hope they ball out, and I hope they're nice surprises. I just don't know because we don't we we see them in preseason, and we hear good things in training camp, but we hear that for a lot of guys. I just I, I don't know. I, I I I until I see it, I can't be excited about it. I want to see. Lucas Van Ness rise to the challenge in these final eight weeks and showcase why, why he was a first-round pick. I know he's only in his second year. But I think now that pressure's even it, it's on him more than what it has been so far. I got to see more from Lucas Van Ness. I got to see more from him. You know, and the one thing too is I know Green Bay does they they rotate a lot of guys with their with their pass rushers. I mean, when you look at the percentage and the snap counts and that, I mean, you know, you're you're not going to see one of those edge guys get into the 80s, 80 percent, right? I mean, it's Green Bay; they've done it even with Jeff Halfley or 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 uh, or Joe Barry. I mean, they've they've rotated. Their their uh their pass rushes their defensive line quite a bit and you know I get it I get it that you want to keep your guys fresh and you want to keep 
you know, them on the field or, you know, want to keep rotating under so they're fresh and not overworked and, and, and this, that, and the other thing. Okay, I, un- I understand that. But the one thing, here's the thing. I would like to see Rashawn Gary on the field more than what than what we've 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 seen him at before. You know, just for for comparisons, you know, his snap count in this game against Detroit. So Rashawn Gary, uh he ended up having 63% of the snaps. Played 63% of the snaps, okay? If we were to power rank him, he's the top pass rusher, edge rusher, defensive end, whatever the heck we're calling it these days, okay? But when I look at guys like Miles Garrett, for comparison, week nine, he played 77%. Week eight, 83. Week seven, 80. Week six, 79. Okay? He's a premier pass rusher. He's their best pass rusher. He's on the field more times than not. When you go to, to Pittsburgh, TJ Watt. His last game, 96, 93, 83, 92. He doesn't come off the field. How about uh, let's go to, well, Max Crosby. Max Crosby never comes off the field, right? You'd be right. Max Crosby, his last three games, 100% of the snaps. In fact, the first two games of the season, 100% of the snaps. 83-94, 83-94, week four he didn't play. His lowest was uh, 82 in week three. So I get there's, you want to keep guys fresh and you want to keep guys, you know, near 100% as, as possible. But at the same time, your best players got to be on the field more times than not. And we had this discussion last year, I feel like, with, with Gary and such when we looked at, or maybe it was a couple years ago when we looked at, Pass rush percentages. I want to see more from from Rashawn. I want to see him on the field more. I want to see him wearing down tackles, offensive tackles throughout the game. If he truly is our best pass rusher and one of our best defensive players, I want to see him on the field more. I think we got to see him on the field more. I mean, even before he got hurt, Aiden Hutchinson, Began the season 90, 90, 97, 87. None of these guys are in the 60s. They're on the field more times than not. The most, the mo- the highest percentage of snaps that Rashawn Gary has played in a single game this year, 69%. That was week three against Tennessee. Otherwise, you're looking at 64 66, 69, 66, 63, 66, 59, 63, 63. In fact, only one edge rusher, pass rusher, defensive end, again, whatever we want to call, eclipsed the 70% mark. That was week one, and it was Preston Smith at 71%. I want to see Rashawn Gary on the field more. I think we need to see him on the field more. I mean, you've got Quay Walker out there as a, as a linebacker playing 100% of the snaps. You've got Jair when he's out there. I mean, he's got a few games here worth 100% of the snaps. Keyshawn Nixon, same thing. They're running around. Xavier McKinney, he's played in 100%, 100% of the snaps in every single dang game so far. Got to see more from Gary. All right, that is going to do it for us on this episode of the Man Cave Podcast. Again, big thanks to our sponsors, hi V and Toyson Ford. As always, don't forget to follow and subscribe, and if you could, give us a five-star rating and a positive review so others can find the podcast. Till next time, I'm Dan Casper, and I will talk to you on the next episode of the Man Cave Podcast.